Hey, my dear students, I am Mr. Paolo F. Esguera, your teacher in biotechnology. Please listen attentively and get your notebook to take the important details throughout our discussion. Thank you. Our topic for today is all about the red biotechnology. So as you notice, I am wearing red shirt para sa ating topic for today. For our lesson objective, at the end of this lesson, students should be able to explain the concept and definition of red biotechnology, elaborate the four main areas of red biotechnology, and value the real-life application of red biotechnology. So what is red biotechnology? So red biotechnology po ay about sa medicine. Again po, ang red biotechnology is all about medicine. Kaya tinatawag din to na medicinal biotechnology. So, red biotechnology utilizes techniques to produce therapeutic proteins or biopharmaceutical or recombinant proteins. Pag sinabi pong biopharmaceutical, ayun lang yung mga medicinal products na nabibili natin sa Drugstores. And kapag naman sinabi natin na um, recombinant protein, so let's click this recombinant protein. So recombinant protein po, it is the manipulated form of protein o ayun yung uh, minodify na protein. So generates in various ways. First is to produce large quantities of proteins. Bali kapag nag-undergo tayo ng recombinant protein, magkakaroon tayo ng maraming protein. And then modify gene sequence. Again po, pag nagkaroon tayo ng recombinant protein, mamomodify yung gene sequence natin. For example is yung corn. Kapag nagkaroon siya ng recombinant protein, yung kanyang gene structure ay mababago. Kasi po meron tayo yung gene structure, kumbaga para sa um, architect, ay mababago yung layout ng design mo. And then, the last po ay manufacture useful products. Siyempre, kaya tayo nag-undergo ng recombinant protein para magkaroon ng mas magandang products. So, that is recombinant protein. So, to be able for you to understand more the definition or concept of red biotechnology or medicinal biotechnology, I have here an example. For example, we have here an animal cell. So, yun to po, yung ating animal cell. The color brown circle. And inside our animal cell, we have the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we have um, DNA. And inside the DNA, we have genes. And inside the genes, we have a protein. So, meron din po tayo ditong bacterial cell. So, sa recombinant protein po, ang nangyayari po dyan, itong um, protein natin ay inilalagay sa isang bacterial cell. So, ayan po, inilagay na natin. Ano ang mangyayari kapag inilagay natin yung protein ng animal cell sa bacterial cell? So, ayan po, ay magmumultiply ng magmumultiply at ayan po yung ating recombinant protein. So, I hope na naintindihan nyo po kung ano ang recombinant protein. And then, ang, reg ang red biotechnology din po is all about medicine. Very good. And the next slide, red biotechnology is a process that utilizes organisms to improve health and help the body to fight diseases. So, di ba dito po ay Inagamit natin yung ating medicines para malabanan yung sakit. 
pero hinahinay lang po sa pagtake ng drugs kasi kapag nasobrahan ka ng pagtake ng drugs ay masisira po ang iyong liver. Kaya uh, modify lang natin ang pag-inom natin ng gamot. So sundin po ang reseta ng doktor. And then itong medicine na pong to ay hindi yun yung drugs na binibili natin illegal. So yung drugs pong yun na dapat natin inumin ay yung legal. Yung nabibili po sa drugstore. And we have example of red biotechnology. The first one is the insulin. So ang insulin po ay nag-turn the sugar into energy. Bale, kapag ikaw ay may, for example, may diabetes, di ba? Kailangan mo ng insulin. Kasi, di ba, kapag tayo ay may diabetes, sobra po ang glucose natin sa katawan or sugar natin sa katawan. Kaya ang nangyayari po, pag nag-take tayo ng insulin, yung sugar na sobra sa atin ay pinapalitan into energy. And then, yung pong insulin natin dati ay galing sa pig and beef. Pero ngayon, napag-aralan po nila na ah, pwede palang gamitin o kumuha ng insulin sa tao. Kaya naimbento po yung human insulin. And the next one po, we have penicillin. Kapag sa penicillin naman po, it is a large range of bacterial infections. It is from penicillium fungi. So the father of penicillin, no other than Sir Alexander Fleming. So siya po ang nakadiscover ng penicillin. Sir, paano po na-discover ni Alexander Fleming yung um, penicillin? So simple lang po. So during his um, work in his lab, Meron po siyang ine-examine at ayun po yung Staphylococcus aureus. So ano po yung Staphylococcus aureus? So it's a member of microbiota of the body, frequently found in the upper respiratory tract and on the skin. So bali ito po yung mga microbes na makikita sa ating respiratory system. At ayun po, sabi dyan, ay nakikita din sa balat. So dito po, kay Alexander Fleming, in-examine niya po yung Flecocus aureus sa mga horses. Tapos po, ano nangyayari doon? Nakaroon ng experiment di Alexander Fleming tungkol nga doon sa Staphylococcus aureus. Na kahit nakakadiri, ay kanya pa rin pong tinetest. Tapos sa kalagitnaan nun, kanyang pag-experiment uh, or pag-aaral dun sa bakteryang yun, ay napansin niya na ay kailangan ko palang magbakasyon. So ayun, nagbakasyon po si Alexander Fleming and then pagbalik niya, nakita niya yung kanyang bakterya o kanyang sample sa isang dish Tapos po, nakita niya na namatay. So, inisip niya kung bakit namatay yon And he found out that there is a fungi that kill that particular bacteria. So, instead na itapon ni um, Alexander Fleming yung Staphylococcus aureus na bacteria, ay pinag-aralan niya to At naisip niya habang siya ay nag-aaral is, what if na kung yung, yung fungi ay napatay yung bacteria na pinag-aaralan ko, siguro itong fungi din na ito ay pwedeng uh, makil yung bacteria sa sugat ng mga tao. Kaya nung World War I ay ginamit ni Alexander Fleming yung kanyang na-discover na cold juice penicillin. So, ayun po yung una niyang tinawag dun. Mold juice penicillin. So, ginamit niya sa mga sundalo and then luckily naging matagumpay po yung penicillin sa paggamot ng 
tugat ng mga sundalo. And then, nakalipas ang mga panahon, yung pong kanyang penicillin ay kinilala, inilibas sa market, at ngayon po ay ipinagbebenta. Pero po ngayon ay mga modified penicillin na po yung ating ginagamit. So, that is the story about penicillin. And the last example is the in vitro fertilization. It is used to treat infertility and help with the conception of a child. So, bale, kapag hindi ka magkaanak, ay pwede po kayo mag-undergo ng in vitro fertilization. Pero ano po yung in vitro fertilization? Ganito yan. So, first, we have a mature egg. So, kukuhanin sa babae. And then, we have a sperm. And then, dito po, ipagkocombine yung mature egg and sperm sa isang dish and then papatagalin po yon hanggang magkaroon po ng embryo so ito po yung embryo and kapag meron na po embryo yung dish na yon ay ilalagay po yung embryo to sa uterus ng babae at dun po papalakihin ng 9 months so ayun po yung in vitro fertilization so again Ano po yung first example natin? Ano yung nakakapag-turn into sugar, yung sugar into energy? That is insulin. Very good. And how about yung nag um nagpe-prevent sa bacterial infection? So it is penicillin. Very good. And paano naman kapag hindi ka magkaanak? Ayun po ay in vitro fertilization. So, I hope na naintindihan nyo po yung examples ng Red Biotechnology. Again, saan po or ano pong role ng Red Biotechnology? It is for medicinal purpose. And now class, let's talk about the four main areas of Red Biotechnology. We have biopharmaceutical or recombinant proteins, gene therapy, pharmacogenomics, and Genetic test. So, let's first tackle about the first area of red biotechnology, the bio, pharmaceutical or recombinant protein. So, again, kapag po sinabing bio pharmaceutical, ayun po ay sa medical products. So, wag lang malilito doon. Kapag sinabi pong bio pharmaceutical, ayun lang ay medical products, yung mga nabibili yung medicines. While pag sinabi natin recombinant protein, again, meron tayong um, pinaliwanag kanina sa video. Pwede yung balikan kung ano ang recombinant protein. And in this slide, it is a protein encoded by a gene. Again po, yung kaninang sample natin, yung protein ng animal cell ay nilipat sa bacterial cell para magmultiply ng maraming proteins to have their desired products. And the second area of red biotechnology is the gene therapy. So it is the manipulation, inserted, and deleted or modified genes for genetic diseases such as cancer. So for example, ay meron kang sakit. So ang gagawin nun, kapag nag -undergo, undergo ka ng gene therapy, ay yung doktor pwedeng Baguhin, magtanggal, magdagdag ng genes sa iyong katawan. So, babaguhin yung iyong genes. So, ayun lang po yung gene therapy. While the third area of red biotechnology is the pharmacogenomics. So, the genetic information derived to produce products and it is the study of how genes affect a person's response to drugs. So, bali sa pharmacogenomics ay pinag-aaralan kung gaano nakaka-apekto sa tao yung product o yung medicine na ipagbebenta or ginagawa nila. For example, yung Biogesic. Before it, re it was released by the manufacturer, ay nag-undergo muna yan ng pharmacogenomics. Bali, tinas muna kung pag ininom yung biogesic ng tao ay
may masama bang epekto ito sa kanila or wala. So, syempre, iniinom na natin yon, nabibili na natin yung biogesic. So, ayun po, ay nakapasa na sa test na yon. Basta kapag pharmacogenomics, inaalam po kung paano nakaka-apekto yung drug sa mga tao. And lastly, is the genetic testing. So, it is the different test to determine genetic diseases, sex, and carrier. So, ito po ay the result of genetic test can confirm or rule out a suspected, suspected genetic condition. So, in simple way po, gene testing help determine person's chance of developing or passing on a genetic disorder. So, for example, ay meron kayong lahi na may sakit na diabetes. So, yun, tinetesting na doon, sa gene testing pala, tinetest na kung mga a-acquire ba nung bata yung sakit na yun or hindi. So, ayun lang po yung genetic testing. And now, class, we can explain the concept and definition of red biotechnology. Again, red biotechnology focus on what discipline? In medicinal discipline. And how about... The four main areas of red biotechnology. So we have biopharmaceutical or recombinant protein, gene therapy, pharmacogenomics, and genetic testing. Pag sinabi nating pinag-aaralan yung effect ng gamot na yon, anong tawag don? That is pharmacogenomics. And how about the deletion, insertion, or manipulation of our genes? So ano po yon? Gene therapy, very good. And how about the determining the sex, genes, or diseases of the trait? Ano pong tawag doon? That is gene testing. Very good. And lastly, what do you call to the protein encoded by a gene? That is recombinant protein and biopharmaceuticals. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned a lot about our lesson in red biotechnology. For our continuation, see you on my video about white biotechnology.